All right, so the next piece that we're going to be piecing together or building is the idea of fusing shapes together. So I'm going to just kind of move some of this stuff out of the way. Uh, they're all great things and whatnot, but I would rather just build with some brand new fresh items. So I'm going to build, uh, let's do a square, and let's put a roof on the square. How about that? So first thing I need to do is let's zoom in a little bit. Let's get these guys out of the background. I really don't want to be distracted too much. I'm going to click on this roof. I'm going to raise it. And I don't know exactly how tall this needs to be. So I'm going to click on this. And I'm just going to hover over that middle square that tells me this is 20 high. So if I go to raising this, I know I just need to raise it to 20. All right. And there we go. And now I can drag it so it's on top of this square. So, oh wow, that was pretty good placement. I think I uh, did pretty good. Let's just use the keyboard to shift it over one. And now I want to fuse these two items together. So they form kind of like a house shape. So I'm going to, first off, uh, there's two ways to do it. First one, remember that box we use? As long as we drag and cover part of the shape in each one, they will both be selected. The other method is to click on the first one and then hold the shift key on the keyboard and click on the second one. And now I've identified both of them. So if we want to fuse them or snap them together to make one object, up here on the upper right, this item, group, we can also press Control G. I kind of like just clicking on it, and I'm going to do that. And now they have both fused together. And I saw the color change, so we now know this is kind of like one object. We can resize the object however we want, and we can make it look like really goofy, really weird. Uh, whatever we want to do size-wise, adjust the height of it, and it kind of looks like a pretty nice house. So that came out pretty cool. So that's the first one, just fusing our two shapes. But let's say for some reason, hey, you know what? I don't like this anymore. I want to get my two original shapes back. I can click on it, and then I can click the item next to it, which is ungroup, or control shift and G. If I click that, I get my two items back. And even though I resized the one item, when we broke it apart, they both took the same sizes. So that's pretty neat too, because, uh, you know, we have these items still both at the same exact height proportional to, or same size to each other proportionally. So that's pretty neat. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead and quickly fuse it back together, because I want to do some other neat stuff with it. All right. Now let's say I wanted to add another item to here. Let's say I want to add a cylinder. And I want to make this a skinny cylinder, but make it tall, because I'm going to make something that kind of looks like a chimney. Right? Trying to design this 3D house, make it look cool, make it look neat. Now, we're going to notice here that there's no way to really flatly place this on, so I can just stab this through the house and then fuse it all together. All right, so there we go. There's kind of like my weird looking house shape. It has a round chimney, which I don't even know if those exist, but hey, we're playing around with some stuff. All right. So now, if I wanted to defuse these, I can click ungroup, and it's going to take the first item that was both of them grouped together. It's not going to ungroup them. So I would need to again ungroup them, and we can see the order. But now that they're all kind of disassembled, I can take all three and fuse them. There's no huge difference on how this stuff works. Um, I just like to kind of do it as kind of like a layer of ordering. Uh, you know, I did my first fusions to make the base of the house. The second one was the chimney. But then I broke it all to pieces and then just fused everything into one object. All right. You'll also notice here we can change the color of this if we want to use it for color coding. So, hey, it's a greenhouse. Get it? All right. Corny jokes aside, I think we should keep pushing forward with playing around with some stuff. All right, so um, what we can do now is explore what these are, these kind of like hidden or shadowy striped items. So I'm going to click one of them, and I'm going to put it right here, fused with the house, or kind of. I'm going to fuse them together now. When we look at this now, notice we can switch it back to the solid colors that we had, but if we click on whole, this basically becomes subtractive. What it does is when you fuse it, no matter how you fuse it together, it's going to put a hole where that item was. 
So I'm going to just draw this quick item. Uh, it looks like a bunch of stuff is being grouped in here, which I don't want to do. So I'm just going to move around so I can draw that. There we go. Let's use or group them together. And it looks like I now have a car garage in my house. So that's pretty neat. We can plug in different types of holes or gaps into it. And as you look around, you can see exactly where it was fused into this building. Now that's not all. You're not just limited to uh, like cubes and cylinders. We can go into something else. Why don't I take this roof shape and partially place it in, make it a hole right here, and then let's fuse these two together and see what we get. Yeah. All right, it's processing. Sometimes it takes a few seconds the more complicated your fusions get. But hey, there we go. Looks like we fused a triangle into it as well. And let's just get kind of weird. I'm going to take some text. I'm going to rotate it this way. Uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, I'm not going to use text. I'm going to call this casa, which is Spanish for house. And then what I'm going to do is try to rotate it and resize it, actually, first. Make this small. And I'm going to rotate this so it's facing this way. And then we're going to drag it into here a little bit and raise it up. So now it looks like I have the word casa inscribed into my house. I'm going to make it a hole. And then we're going to fuse it together. And now what I've been able to do is actually imprint or subtract the word casa from the house. Now I'm going to keep doing these silly dumb things to it because I just want to kind of like you know, show the ridiculousness and hopefully teach us how to build and basically destroy our masterpieces if we're not careful with it. So I'm going to take this sphere, let's drop it into the house quite a bit. Yeah, let's do that. That's going to look weird. Make that a hole. Draw that. Use it. And, oh, wow, that's really weird. There's like a sphere just basically cut out of the, uh, the shape of this house. So we can get really weird at this stuff. Now, here's the thing, though. From a 3D printing perspective, this support beam is not going to hold while the plastic is liquid, so it's going to droop down and kind of destroy it. Now, if we're just making 3D models for fun, who really cares, right? Because we can do some other stuff. We can also add extra items in. So for example, I could make this another 3D shape in the place here. Use these guys together. And now the entire house has this weird fused item just attached with like a kind of cut out triangle, but then there's like this archway added. It's got casa inscribed into it. It's got a car garage. Uh, let's add one last thing, because why not? Why don't we add a star? All right, let's uh, rotate it. Snap it right up into the house on this side. Maybe shrink it a little bit, just so it's not too obnoxious. Saying that uh, from the person who put a, uh, an entire sphere on one side. And then I'm going to also do something kind of weird. Let's extend this all the way through, make it a hole, and now let's fuse that. I am just snapping weird stuff together and making some real weird stuff. So now this actually has like a star punch going through it. And oh, it looks like we destroyed Casa. So let's ungroup that and let's move this star up a little bit. At this point, I'm just like playing with this as like a an experimental like design uh, so you know don't feel like this is something that you need to create I'm obviously making something that's incredibly weird and I'll fuse that together and again this house looks weird um, but it's kind of neat because we can almost kind of like drive or fly through it by zooming so we can actually go inside and kind of like take a quick tour around inside the house and then we'll zoom out to you know take a peek so it almost looks like a like a cheese house like with all the holes in it so that's pretty cool uh but again this is all practice for us just trying to fuse things have some fun with it you know see what you can do and again 
don't feel like you have to make anything that's like a masterpiece at this point. Um, you know, we're just trying to enjoy ourselves and make sure that we can create an interesting and unique situation. So let's do one last thing. We're just going to slice a giant circle out of this. And there we go. Call that a complete disaster, but also a masterpiece in the same light. All right. So what you should be trying to do to have some fun with this is, first off, let me delete a few of these obnoxious things. Uh, a couple exercises to try, a couple things to play around with. Uh, let's zoom in. So one of my favorite exercises to do is to create a plate. We're going to shrink down the height of it. We're going to put this ECSD tech into there, make it a hole, fuse it. And you kind of have a plate that has some like cool 3D stuff attached. Now I'm just going to show you one really quick uh, concern that I have is if we print this and we lift it, this spot inside the letter D and this spot inside the letter E are not going to be attached. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make a little tiny uh, short piece of plastic that's going to attach the E on both sides, right? It's not going to look perfect, but we kind of need to do this if we want to have working letters. And the same thing with the letter D. I'm going to pop this in. Let's make this a different color just so we can notice that difference. Shrink it. Attach it. Lower this really, really low just so it's a little bit of support. And then we can use that. And now these letters will at least be supported when we run it. And as you zoom out, it looks pretty good. And you know, it's a design choice on how you want to build and create these items. All right. So um, hopefully this is a nice little kind of uh, tour on fusing, subtraction, all that other fancy stuff. And if there are any questions or anything, don't be afraid to ask. And yeah, this is, uh, you know, basically us playing around and goofing around with stuff. So after this, we're going to start designing our own things. I'm going to show you some example videos of me making each of these projects. And then you will be free to play, design, create, and engineer. Because that is what we're doing. We are becoming engineers in this class. All right. Best of luck and try to play around with stuff and make something cool and weird.